Finally, Ford just released pricing for the 2024 Mustang and more importantly, the Dark Horse. And I will say that pricing does look pretty good for those people who missed out on last call cars with Dodge. So let's look into the prices of the new Mustangs and if I'm going to try to get one myself. Now let's jump right into the pricing. Starting with the Mustang EcoBoost Fastback with a 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine, it starts at $30,920, which will put it in a good spot against the current XXT and GT Challenger. The EcoBoost Premium Mustang will set you back $36,445, which is still in the ballpark of a GT Challenger. And then we have $42,000 for a convertible Mustang EcoBoost. I think Ford did a great job of keeping the next gen Mustang EcoBoost cars in the 30 to 40k range to make them more affordable. It remains to be seen next year what Dodge will do with their new lineup of cars. Now Dodge doesn't even want to announce that they're going to be putting internal combustion engines in their cars for 2024, but it's like one of those worst kept secrets that we will be seeing Hurricane internal combustion engines in the next gen Challenger and Charger, and for Dodge's sake, I hope they announce the next cars in the next couple of months because these Mustangs do look very good and an armory of Dodge electric quote unquote muscle cars isn't going to drive customers into showrooms when you have Ford and GM still offering V8s in their cars next year. And speaking of V8s, let's move on to the Mustangs cheapest GT Fastback at $41,495. That puts the V8 Mustang GT about $2,000 more expensive than a Challenger RT with 480 horsepower. But I think the real bargain is the Mustang GT Premium Fastback at $46,015. I like this trim because you can get Brembo's for a few grand cheaper than a Challenger Scat Pack narrow body. And then to pack more of a punch, you can get the Mustang GT Premium Convertible for $51,515 which is still cheaper than a Challenger Scat Pack widebody. I think Ford priced the Mustang real good against Dodge, and it's going to be tough to not consider a next-gen Mustang with a V8, and it comes in cheaper than a Challenger Scat Pack. And I'll talk about later on in the video, but when you option these Mustang cars, they pretty much come out very comparable to Dodge's Scat Packs and their GT cars. But I am very interested in seeing how Dodge will price their next-gen cars against Ford, especially if Dodge drops the Hemi from the lineup in 2024. If GM will get their act together and make a better looking Camaro, I think Dodge will be in trouble. My problem with the Camaro is that it feels like you're driving in a coffin, the windows are so short, the door panels are pretty much over your neck, that you just feel kind of claustrophobic in that car. Now I've read the rumors that the Camaro is going to turn into a Ford or electric car, but if GM would just make a better looking Camaro two door, not have it feel like a coffin when you're driving it, and also bring in a cheap V8 sedan, and I'll include Ford in that too if Ford makes a V8 sedan, I think Dodge will be in very deep trouble, especially if the sedan is like decently fast at around 50-60k. I think that'll be a sweet spot for GM and Ford to hit. Now the last car to talk about on this list is the current V8 top dog from Ford, the Dark Horse Mustang. This is the car that I'll be the most interested in other than a GT Premium V8 convertible. If there was a convertible Dark Horse Mustang, I would 100% get that car. One of the baddest cars I remember was one of my buddy's old convertible Shelby Mustang. That was a crazy car to drive around in with the top down and grab it on that rollover bar. But the Mustang Dark Horse will be 500 horsepower and cost $57,970. I think it's a couple grand too expensive, but I mean heck, it's still under 60 k so that's still pretty decent. But I can't help but sit back and just think about this. It's hard to believe a wide body Challenger Red Eye is $30,000 more expensive than a Dark Horse Mustang. That's like having a free EcoBoost Mustang or XST Challenger to go around and play around in. For the cost of a Challenger Red Eye wide body, I can buy like a base Dark Horse Mustang to go play around in and then have an EcoBoost Mustang to daily drive for around the same price if I don't mod both the cars up. That just crazy if you think about it in that way. If for some reason I don't get my Challenger Red Eye wide body, I'll for sure be shopping around for a Dark Horse allocation. I really had one more month until my Challenger Red Eye Y-Body is built, 
and if I don't get it, I have plenty of time to shop around for a Dark Horse Mustang. But I was doing some digging around already, and man, what I tell you, the ADM games are already starting to be strong nowadays with some of these dealers. I've already had some go ahead and tell me 15k ADM to order the car. And I've seen dealers already have waiting lists for Dark Horse Mustangs. So if any of you guys have a Dark Horse Mustang order in the last day or two, congratulations, because it's already starting to get hard from what I can see. When I was working on this video, the order guy came out with the pricing on pretty much everything, and so I was able to get an idea of how much a Mustang optioned out would cost. Now I spent both a Dark Horse and a convertible Mustang GT Premium. I got around $66,825 for a pretty high spec convertible. I loaded it with a 41A Tech Group, automatic transmission, GT Performance Package, Recaro seats, active exhaust, the Midnight Pony Package that was blacking everything out, and the Magna Ride suspension. And then I went on Dodge's website and built a comparable Chandra Scat Pack wide body and got pretty much the same price around $66,285. So that's not too bad against a car that's like 16 years old and doesn't have a convertible option. That's not a bad price. Now moving on to the Dark Horse Mustang, I spent it pretty high with a 700A equipment group, which gives you an extra added security, garage door opener, memory seats and mirrors, aluminum foot pedals, and some luxury interior pieces. Me personally, I would do the Dark Horse in manual, add Recaro seats, the handling package, carbon fiber wheels, which is $8,495, which is actually $3,500 cheaper than the Z06 Corvette that I spec'd out amazingly. But if you guys didn't know, I actually have on order a C8 Z06 and I spec'd it with those Z06 wheels, but I haven't done a really like an in-depth video on my spec, but I'll make sure I probably do that in the next few weeks or two. But when I saw the price on these carbon wheels and Dark Horse Mustang, I mean, I'm looking at this order guide and I think you can add these to other GT cars. I mean, it would be crazy to think that you can add carbon fiber wheels to like a $30,000 car, but these wheels are a bargain compared to the Z06. But moving on, I would expect the Dark Horse appearance package as well and the painted stripes because I love how the hood looks on this car and that blue amber paint. Now the Banger Officer system, I probably wouldn't get it because in my TRX and my Hellcat, I never turn the radio on because I just love hearing the exhaust as I'm driving. So that would just be a toss up whether or not I get or not on this particular car. But I came up with $84,850 for a high spec dark horse. Which is crazy to think that it'll put it at a starting price of a red eye jailbreak Challenger wide body. I mean that's just crazy to think how high that price I got. And like I said earlier, I have a Challenger red eye wide body jailbreak on order. And mine is spec pretty conservatively and it's still in the 90k range. It's crazy to think that a carbon fiber wheel dark horse can be in a similar price range as a Challenger Red Eye, but if I remove the carbon wheels and the painted stripes, that would take up about $15,000 off of the price, and it will still be pretty low to dark horse, and it will bring it back down to the 70k range, and that will still be in the range of either a starting price of a Challenger Hellcat, or like a pretty well option scat pack wide by the Challenger. So as long as someone doesn't go crazy with the options on a Dark Horse or a GT Mustangs, the prices are not that bad compared to Dodge. So like I said earlier, if I can't get my Challenger Red Eye, because we all know the dealers like to sneak in these last minute 5000 $10,000, $15,000 additional markups when you walk in the door and you're ready to leave and throw off your whole day with nonsense. But I think I'm going to try to play it safe, try to hunt down a deal, maybe like an MSRP deal for a Dark Horse and try to put an order in. If I happen to get my Challenger Red Eye and find a Dark Horse order, that will be a very interesting lineup considering I still have my Hummer EV reservation coming up probably sometime at the end of the year and I have no idea when my Z06 is coming. It's in the system, maybe it comes at the end of the year, maybe it comes sometime next year, but who knows when it comes to any of these orders. So you're going to be seeing a lot of videos from me over the next few months leading up to when each car is going to come and all the whole process of me going through getting updates and stuff like that. So I'll let you guys know if I do track down a Dark Horse allocation. If I don't take it, I'll just post it in the community feed like I was doing with the uh, Challengers and Chargers where I was finding MSRP deals and dealers for you. And that's it for this video. I'm liking the prices of the Mustang GT models. I think the Dark Horse is maybe a couple grand higher than what I expected it to be. But it's not really that bad, especially with the carbon fiber wheels being a couple grand cheaper than the C8 Corvette. But overall, I think Ford did a good job on pricing. And I think I'm going to do a poll and ask you guys, do you guys think I should get a Mustang added to the channel? 
but let me know what you guys think about the new Mustangs and the pricing. Are you guys interested in getting one? Have you already put an order in for one? But if you found this video helpful, make sure you leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Grab some merch on your way out. Until the next time, I'm out.